microphone on. <laughs> good, good morning. It's um, Wednesday morning, and we can expect uh, some cooler weather on the way. Northern part of England and parts of Wales are actually going to get dusting of snow. I don't think that's going to happen down in Lewis, but nonetheless, that's where we're broadcasting from this morning, and it is going to be chillier outside. I'm Pete Hayes, and this is Mirador Television, serving the southeast of uh, the United Kingdom, along the East Sussex uh, coastal strip, uh, from Battle to Brighton, and then up to Gatwick and to Tunbridge Wells. There's our remit, but we're on the World Wide Web, and quite often the people that uh, we get correspondence from, particularly at this hour of the morning, because it's mm, a little late at night, for instance, in Vancouver, it's, uh, it's about 10 o'clock at night. Uh, is it even that? Yes, it is. It's just coming up to, to 10 o'clock at night. Uh, and uh, they, they tend to not have gone to bed yet, and we get quite a bit of, of um, activity from that part of the world, shall we say. But generally speaking, we're looking at what's happening in, in Lewis, but we're local and not parochial, uh, so we look at uh, broader issues that might affect our community. And, of course, Brexit has to take headlines this morning. You'll read about it in the papers and you'll hear about it on television and radio, so I'm not going to go into detail. But what worries me is that a number of people have... Uh, expressed locally on uh, Facebook and other social media uh, that um, our MP, has, uh, Maria Caulfield, uh, has voted in uh, contrary to the majority of her constituents. Um, and that may or may not be true. Well, I mean, I think it probably is true. Uh, but whether, whether that's right or wrong is um, the system that we have, the system of the government, is, is that we vote for a representative who belongs to a party and that generally speaking they follow that party's whip uh, and it's a lovely expression isn't it whip and a chief whip you can imagine this guy with a lash going around or or a gal for that matter there are some pretty fierce lady chief whips um, going around lashing people and telling them how to vote and of course that's how the system works and uh, um, un undoubtedly uh, she followed the whip but uh, the fact of the matter is that um, the uh, uh, Parliament at the moment is in disarray, as nobody knows who's leading. And last night, or yesterday, is uh, uh, Theresa May decided to defy her cabinet. Now, you may say, very brave or whatever, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, um, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is uh, it, the system has now broken. And if the system is broken, then eventually Britain will become ungovernable. Whether we like it or not, there is a system in place, the rule of law. And I spent a lot of time in the Balkans, uh, the, the, the Baltics, across other parts of the world, uh, the South Caucasus and so on, where the issue of rule of law is very key and where people tend to do their own thing if they feel like it and they can ram through any legislation they want. It's a very dangerous situation. Very dangerous indeed. So before we actually dump on poor old Maria, uh, perhaps what we'd better do is to look at whether the system is fit for purpose. And before you actually say blah, 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 about uh, what's happening in Westminster, of course, that's the very thing that's happening on our doorstep, is some of the things that we have not liked and we have objected to uh, as a, a, a people and through uh, uh, public media, whether that be radio, television, uh, the, the internet, or, or whatever, is uh, the, the local uh, cabinet have done what they want. Uh, and uh, that is done because the present setup is, is that a few, a few people uh, can control the entire council's activities along with a compliant executive. Uh, and uh, that, that's why we start off with this, because um, the, 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 some of the politicians who are in real power and the executive who actually carry out these things uh, like one another. They, they pat one another on the back and they say just how wonderful they are. Well, uh, the fact of the matter is uh, um, that sort of thing it doesn't lend itself to democracy. So we've got a real problem here. And what we've been urging people to do is uh, uh, to um, ask our pot of pol party politics right for local government. And when you talk to your local candidates, uh, it might be worth asking how what they think about this and, and whether, in fact, there is a move towards uh, independence. Uh, some of the Lib Dems have uh, decided to 
to, to uh, well, some well, one or two Lib Dems have stood down uh, to run as independents. Apparently, a number of people have left. Uh, key people have left the local Liberal Party. Uh, there are nine Conservatives, at least, who are now not going to run again. Uh, so I think there is a, a groundswell of feeling that um, party politics is perhaps not the best thing for us and uh, that we should restructure and look at the system. Now, the, the Cabinet system came in in uh, uh, 2000 with uh, Tony Blair's Local Government Act. Uh, but in 2015, uh, there was an amendment to that act, which means that you can opt out. Uh, and I, my understanding is that uh, Brighton and Hove has opted out. And if that's the case, I would suggest that the local committee, and there is a local committee of councillors uh, who have been studying this, go and take a look to see whether that's working. OK, so the system that Cabinet replaced in 2000 uh, also wasn't working. Uh, um, but we don't necessarily have to go back to that. Let's take a look and get recommendations on a system that will work, that will govern, that will take account of what the citizen thinks uh, and be, be uh, overt in decisions. And that's the big thing is this council is not. It is secretive, to say the least, it's secretive. And uh, you, you can't, I mean, <laughs> okay, uh, so, so it, it's also broken. <laughs> it just doesn't work. <laughs> As I think I said to you, uh, uh, I, I lodged a complaint last August. I'd almost forgotten about the complaint. And I got a letter uh, uh, sort of 10 days ago uh, uh, saying that, that they'd looked at it. It didn't give any solution. It just said that one form wasn't signed. <laughs> <laughs> after six months, seven months, in fact. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's not only that they're secretive, uh, but also that the system is, isn't there. I mean, you, you can't have councils who uh, um, send out a letter after six months complaint. Uh, there's got to be a system where it, 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 people, uh, the, the council and the executive react quite quickly. Uh, and if, if that's not happening now, then... This, the committee that is looking into local governance should indeed be taking a, a account of the fact that the citizen's voice is not heard here. I'm, I'm uh, sort of very pleased to say that with the retrenchment of um, uh, true local media, although, you know, look, looking through the, uh, the, the web, I, I think that the Sussex Express still does a fair job on highlighting some stuff. Local BBC uh, uh, does uh, as well. But it's not the way that, for instance, the good old um, hack, and he won't mind me calling him hack because that in our industry is uh, uh, something that, to be proud of. Uh, uh, John Eccles, John Eccles was everywhere. Uh, and um, he, he reflected what was happening in our community. He retired now, uh, ill health, uh, but he, he was a, a, a very, very good local journalist, and we don't have that anymore. Uh, we are slowly finding it's being replaced by a website such as uh, Lewis I, um, and uh, the, the uh, groups, the Facebook groups, are doing a very, very good job in many ways of highlighting stuff because the citizen sees them. If they see a robbery in the street, they put it on, on Facebook. Um, and uh, people like Lewis I and ourselves are able to pick that up and say, OK, look, there's a trend here. We don't have massive resources. <laughs> in fact, we have no resources at all. But we are able to, um, to, to jointly highlight stuff and let the powers that be uh, know that we're either uh, not very happy with them or, or that things should change. And, um, OK, Mirador Television, is, is, uh, uh, it's been around for about a year, uh, and um, uh, sometimes we, we get massive. Uh, the last couple of, couple of weeks, our programmes have been getting about 10,000 viewers uh, over all media, and that's pr pretty damn good. Um, but uh, uh, there are weeks when we, we also get uh, uh, 500. Um, so it depends on what we're talking about. But the fact of the matter is, it's growing. When we started, there were two. <laughs> so we are growing, and there is an awareness, and I'm happy to say that some of our politicians are now becoming aware. Although, you, you know, I, I was talking to... Uh, an aide to an American senator a couple of years or so ago, and he said, you know, the big problem with most of our politicians is they don't read. 
Um, is that they have things put in front of them, marked in yellow, is, is that, and they don't read, they've forgotten how to read. So they quite often don't put stuff in context, not least of which they can also be steered by their uh, aides who have a particular point of view. And uh, what I'm finding is that our local politicians don't seem to have too much time uh, for uh, watching either television or, or reading the local newspapers to any great extent, uh, in which case we understand that people are busy, but get yourself a, a press secretary. Okay, you say that they cost money. Well, there's enough money floating around amongst the associations if you're actually going to have party politics for them to have press secretaries. Uh, the, this, uh, the press secretary for the Lewis District Council. Uh, you know, we, we've, we've actually put our heads together, uh, particularly the people at... Um, a town and County, the new magazine, uh, to, to see if we can actually find somebody to talk to. And we know there is a press secretary, but getting to him is, once again, it's, it, it's so much covert, and, and people duck and dive and stay out of the way at Lewis District Council that uh, even the people at the front desk don't know who he is. So those are the sort of things that have got to change. They've got to be more transparent so that we can take a look. All right, Keith, enough rent. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. There's a couple of other things I want to talk about. Boots, uh, it looks as if the, uh, the, the predictions that they're going to cut uh, stores and that 60,000 people uh, will be on the streets. Uh, well, um, th that, that's a bit worrying, I think, because uh, when the, the high street chemist starts to go, uh, then we're, we're all in trouble. Although I have to say that Lewis particularly is well served by much smaller organizations than Boots, and uh, that they are, are indeed very good chemists. But Boots tended to be um, uh, uh, much wider than that, with great ranges of other goods, uh, particularly uh, stuff for um, uh, ladies to make up their faces with and that sort of thing. Uh, so, um, you know, it would be sorry to see that go, but also it, it means jobs being cut and premises being uh, changed. Uh, and it's all very well for us to say, wow, we, we mustn't have a McDonald's and we mustn't have this and we mustn't have that, it'll spoil it. But if that Boots Corner shop goes, I would say that that was an ideal spot for a McDonald's. And what are you going to do? Are you going to turn it down? Here's, here's the rental, chaps. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and particularly the way that our planning committee is uh, is constituted is if, um, if if McDonald's have got the money and they have, I bet you that, that we'll start to see something like that in a premises abandoned by Boots. I don't know that, that Lewis Boots is going, but oh, across the country they're cutting down and uh, they say 60,000 jobs are at stake. Uh, cold the weather I've mentioned, be careful about it, wrap up, it is cold at the moment. Uh, now, uh, uh, more worrying is a sexual assault on a 12-year-old girl in Birmingham on top of the bus by uh, half a dozen men. Now, uh, um, uh, and there are 21 uh, knife crimes incidents uh, reported a day now. Well, we all know that London is uh, having real problems. This is in Birmingham. And, uh, you know, we, we tend to sneer when we look at uh, other countries and we say, uh, third world. When we, we read about uh, young, young ladies being raped in uh, um, India and, and other uh, less populated places, uh, and, and we, we, we can, yeah, 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 third world, yeah, 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 can't they do something about it? Well, it, it's starting to come here. Not only knife crime, but rape, rape on a bus. Uh, um, that, that is frightening. It is very, very frightening indeed. And, and I, I hope that w what is going to happen is when people can stop talking about Brexit and start to look at law and order, that we get some sort of form. Because at the moment, all they're doing is pussyfooting around and, and trying to, to say all the things that we've had over the last 10 years uh, will increase and they don't work. Uh, so that's uh, something else that I think we have to be very concerned about. Uh, now, uh, the last two things, because it's six o'clock. Uh, one, well done, Harvey's. They've got awards for gin. Two gin awards in a very prestigious uh, uh, tasting, uh, 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 um, what is it, contest, I suppose, yeah. Uh, and the, 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 there are 70 countries uh, that, that put in for this uh, award uh, and 1,700 entries and, uh, and, and Harvey's have walked off with two awards for gin. 
How how marvellous! And that, according to the uh, the reports, is they make it much as they make their beer. So there's something to be said for there. But at lunchtime, I'm going to try one of their gins and see see how it is. <laughs> I just remembered that we, one time uh, a few years ago, we used to call it the gin and it, <laughs> gin and tonic. Uh, it wasn't uh, quite the, the the drink that it is today. We used to get gin and it, and the it stood for Italian. But it was a good good s slogan. Gin and it. And finally, uh, the cherry blossoms are out. And aren't they beautiful? And I went into Brighton yesterday and I sat on top of the bus and I watched as we went down past the university and, and past the uh, Moleskine estate. Uh, and really, the, the display of cherry trees all along that road into Brighton is quite beautiful. Go and experience it. If nothing else, just climb on the bus and go and take a look. Although we do have cherry trees here uh, in various parts of the town, but the display along the roadside is, is brilliant. And I think there are Japanese cousins who actually have a cherry blossom festival would be delighted with what we're doing. OK, two minutes over this morning, bit of a rant. Never mind, I'll be back tomorrow morning. Look forward to seeing you. To Len, Keith Hayes, Toodle Pip. Mm -hmm.